that you give us life through your spirit. That through your spirit we can have eternal life. That we can be with you and know you as Lord. Father, let our eyes continuously see your hand at work about us. Let our eyes and hearts and ears receive your word, embrace your word, and Holy Spirit, touch us and continue to draw us close to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. (coughs) Mike, excuse me. It's that time of the year when there's pollen out there and it sure does affect me on occasion and I think I'm having that little experience and Deacon Lori is not with us today. She is moving her household goods to another house. So keep her in prayer because I don't know if you like to move or not, but I sure don't like to move. And I'd be afraid to move with all we've acquired over the last 10 years or so. But I do want to welcome you into the house of the Lord today where we truly do worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King Jesus. And as always, he is glad that you're here with him, here with his spirit, and here to hear his word and to worship him. But that's what we are called to do. Where does your hope lie? I think that's a big question that we're always asked. Where does your hope lie? Where does your faith lie? Is it within ourselves or is it within God? Is it in the circumstances in which we are surrounded by or is it totally with God and no matter what the circumstances are? I think this is really the key theme that goes through all of these readings that we had today from the Ezekiel prophecy of the dry bones to Paul reminding us that when we're alive, we're alive in the spirit. And even with Lazarus and Mary and Martha, how our hope rests within him and not within our circumstances. I love this passage in Ezekiel. We, we really speak about it and maybe in terms that we shouldn't, but, you know, that old song, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Y'all probably have heard that at one time or another. But what we find is something very unique in this, and that God has taught, taken Ezekiel and has taken him to this valley of dry bones, whether it's in a vision or whether it is actual physical transformation and taking him there to show the dry bones. And I think that's something we need to see because we always see these in westerns and things like that when they're riding the horse out through the desert, it's really hot, and they come across these dry bones and you know the skeletons in the desert. And, you know, when I lived out in the Southwest, there were times that we went into the desert and occasionally we would find those dry bones, those sun-bleached bones and knew that something had happened, that animal had died there. Dry bones have no life in them. Dry bones have, they're just there in the desert. But why did God take him there? Why did God show him these dry bones? I think it's interesting because in this passage, He says that they will know that I am Lord. They will know that who I am. And I think that's the message that we need to hear today. Are we willing to see that this is the Lord's work? No matter where we are or what our circumstances is. Israel had been taken into exile. The Babylonians had set them apart and moved them around and took some here, some there. And some of the poorest were left in Judah. And what we find is that they had lost that hope. They had lost that hope. They had lost that richness of who God is. They would lost the richness of their faith. And they felt dried up. And sometimes I think that's what happens to us in our faith, that we feel dried up, that God, where are you? In this passage, it also says that that they had no hope, that their hope was gone. The bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt that God has separated himself from you? Have you ever felt like you're out there alone? Where is your hope? There's a song we sing and Christ alone my hope is found. And that is really what we're looking at today is about the hope that they have, the hope that God is giving them. 
And so God tells Ezekiel, go out there and prophesy to these bones, prophesy to the breath, prophesy to them, to awaken them. But he asks Ezekiel this one great question in the beginning. Mortal, can these bones live? Now what would you say? I mean, you look and you see these dry bones. Everything is gone from them. You can see their joints, but nothing's attaching them. Nothing's there. And what would your eyes immediately think? What would it register? No. But Ezekiel says one thing. He says, I answered, O Lord, you know. You see, Ezekiel, even though he sees this devastation, he looks and he says, only you, Lord, know. Only you know because you're the creator of heaven and earth. Only you know because of your great power. Only you know because of who you are and that life comes from you. Only you, Lord, know. And I think when we get in those situations in our life, when we get in those situations where we don't know, we can't take it upon ourselves. How can this happen? How can it be? Oh, Lord, only you know. And God tells Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. The same breath that brought Adam to life. The same breath that when he formed him out of the earth and he was just dust and basically a mud puddle of a man. He breathes life into him. The Spirit of God who gives us life, he breathes it into him. In that same life, that same Spirit, the Ruach, as the Hebrew says, Ruach, the breath of God, the Spirit of God comes in to these bones. Prophesy. And then Ezekiel witnesses something. He sees the bones are there and all of a sudden the sinews start coming on. Now I don't know if you've ever been in a desert place. There's many times in my life that I've felt abandoned. There's many times that I've felt in the desert. It happens when you know, things and circumstances around us aren't going the way they should. There's times in my life when I'm like, oh Lord, where are you? You ever say that? Oh Lord, where are you? Please. But Ezekiel witnesses something. Ezekiel witnesses those sinews starting to come together and pulling those bones together and binding them together. And then he witnesses the skin coming on. And the covering, the covering that God gives us to protect us. And then breathing that breath. And the bones coming alive. You see, they had lost their hope. They were in exile. Things were not the way they were. They were in the bad situation. And yet, God is reminding them, I am the Lord, that they may know that I am the Lord because it's only through the Lord that things could get to the better. It's only through the Lord that they could be carried through their situation. It's only through that situation that they may know that I am Lord and God reveals himself in a powerful way to them. When we look at our gospel lesson today, it's no different. Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who knew Jesus personally, he'd been at their home. We all know the story of Martha and Mary, right? Well, Mary, why are you out there sitting at his feet? But we know that he loved them. Bethany is only about two miles away from Jerusalem and the Jews and the Pharisees have been planning and trying to stone Jesus and yet Jesus says, we are going to go. And his disciples said, what? You're going to go back into that territory? You know they're trying to kill you, right? Jesus, you sure you want to go? Don't we always try to take control sometimes of what the Lord's going to do? We want to say, well, Lord, if if I were you, I would do it this way or Lord, let's do it this way but you know what Jesus said no we're going to go we're going to go and God is going to be glorified Thomas he doesn't fully understand it Thomas I like because Thomas really even though we say he's doubting Thomas Thomas is willing to follow Jesus wherever Jesus is going to go whether it's in danger or not he may not understand and he doesn't understand 
what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. He just understands that Jesus is the Messiah. Martha has confessed that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God and he's willing to follow even in the face of death because he doesn't fully understand how Jesus is Lord but he's still willing to follow him. Let us go. Let's follow him in there. Are we willing to follow Jesus in that capacity? Are we willing to go forward? Are we willing to stand beside Jesus no matter what the circumstances and whoever says anything to you or about you or Maybe he takes you to a weird place. But are we willing to follow? Do we have that kind of faith to follow? Thomas didn't know. And then they say, well, you know, Lazarus, he's only sleeping, he'll awake, he'll be fine. Jesus has to really point out to them, he's dead. Hello, he's dead. But we're going to go. We're going to go. Jesus calls to let Martha know that he wants to see Mary. Mary comes and starts running out to meet him and others thinking that she's going to the grave or to the tomb which would be outside of their village or near their village. We'd be going to there. It's like we would go to a cemetery to pay our respects and she goes out there and goes to meet Jesus and what does she do? She falls at his feet. She falls and kneels at his feet. But sometimes I think we interpret what Martha and Mary said in a wrong context. Well Lord if he'd been here my brother would have lived. It's not that way at all. You see, they knew that if Jesus had been there, he'd healed the blind man, he'd healed so many other people, that if he had been there, that her brother would have been healed. It's not like, well, Lord, you should have been here. Now, there were those that said that in that gospel, and they said, well, if he healed the blind man, why couldn't he be here? And sometimes we get that feeling, well, Lord, why aren't you here? Why didn't you do this for me? Why but we miss God's glory in all of this. We miss what God is doing, His powerfulness. And if He had been there and healed Lazarus, they wouldn't understand the power of the resurrection. They wouldn't know the power of God in the resurrection when Jesus is raised on the third day. You see, it's that that we need to see. We need to see the power of God. We need to see the power of His resurrection. We need to have that experience where we have the Spirit of God within us to sustain us and lead us. As Paul said in his writings, if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, then you don't belong to Him. But it's that Spirit that gives light. It gives us life to carry us through, to sustain us, and to go forward. And Jesus asks Mary where Lazarus is and to take him to the tomb. Now they might have thought that he was going there to pay respects and as anyone would. But then he does something that is totally unknown. Totally against anything that would have happened because they knew that if somebody had died they would give them four days to make sure that they were really dead and not banging on from the inside of the tomb or hollering. But at the fourth day they would know and they would know that the body was starting to decay and when you go to a grave and remember that passage where it says where Jesus accuses the Pharisees of being whitewashed tombs that's a passage that we should take to heart because he's talking about the Pharisees having looking clean on the inside but not on or looking clean on the outside but not on the inside because it's where our heart is and not just on the surface and when the great feast came, many hundreds or thousands of people came to Jerusalem. They needed a place to stay, and some of them would stay in caves. But they would wash these caves that had bodies in them so that they would be ceremonially clean and not go in them. But once you went in a cave, you would be unceremonially clean and couldn't participate in the festivals. And so here's Lazarus' tomb. And Jesus says, open it. Now that would have made him unceremonially clean. He could not even participate in the temple. 
But if Lazarus is alive, it makes a difference, doesn't it? And Jesus prays and prays out loud. He prays so that others can hear. Not the prayers like we read about in Matthew 6 where the Pharisees are out there standing on the corners going, Oh, Lord! You know those people sometimes. Oh, Lord! Just hear my prayers! But he prays out loud. He says, Father, I know that you hear my prayers all of you. And then he says three words. Not in wishful things, not in wishful sayings, not in a wish prayer, but a command. A command over life and death. A command that only God could do by creation and revealing himself that who he is. Lazarus come forth. Imagine what they would have thought when all of a sudden here he comes. You've seen the movie The Mummy, I'm sure. Seen mummies like that, you know, on television? That's how he would have been wrapped. And here he comes forth. And Jesus says, I'm binding. Let him loose. He's alive. You see, it's God's Word that brings us into life. It's God's Word that sustains us in life. It's God's Word that no matter where we feel like we're dry bones in the wilderness or we're in our pain and sorrow or whether we're in joyful times, it's God's Word that keeps us alive and keeps His Spirit within us and draws us close to Him. It's God's Word that has the power. It's God's Spirit that has the power. It's God's Spirit who lives within us that draws us to Him. When we start falling away or we ignore God during the day, we lose that strength. We start relying upon ourselves or looking around at the circumstances around us and let that drive us rather than taking them to the throne of God. Because we can, because of who He is. I don't know where you are today in your walk. But today is a day to say, Lord, you raised the dead. Lord, let my spiritual life with you not be dead. You see, that's the blessing of taking the Lord and knowing Him and knowing His Spirit is that if we feel like we're dead spiritually, He'll raise us up again. He'll bind the sinews to the bones. He'll bring us through that process of being alive. But we have to take His Spirit within us. Allow God to work in your life today. Allow God to resurrect those areas that need to be resurrected in Him. But it only comes through Him. And if you're walking in the Spirit and experiencing God's joy, continue to praise Him and watch Him even grow you more within your faith. Ezekiel saw the dry bones come to life. Israel said, our hope is lost, but God's revealing there's hope within me. Martha and Mary, their hope was lost. But Jesus reveals to them the power of God and the resurrection. And we live in that power of the resurrection. Paul reminds us. And he says in Corinthians. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And may share his suffering becoming like him in death. When we receive the Lord. When we receive the Spirit. We can know the power of the resurrection. That we have a spiritual life, a new life, an eternal life with our Lord. Amen. Amen. The works that you have called us to do were those who are going to the source today to feed the homeless, to go out beyond our four walls. Will you come forward today so that we may send you out with a blessing? All those who are going to the source, all those who are going to serve, they're all in the kitchen. Bring them out. Bring them out. I often look at ministries and I say, are they a four-wall ministry or a beyond-the-walls ministry? 
And we want to do beyond the walls ministry. And that's what the source is. It's a beyond the walls ministry. It is those who go out into the world as Jesus has called us to go out into the world. It is those who go out to touch the lives of those who are in need. Those who render God's grace to those and share His love and His mercy. These will be those who are going down to express God's love. They're going down to express how much they know that God loves those that are less, that have less than we have. And so these are the ones who have come together, who have helped put the mats together, who have helped put the bags together, but are taking that source of nutrient, food as it is, material food, but also hopefully a spiritual food that they would need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you said where two or three are gathered together, that you are in their presence. Father, we thank you for the hearts of these that are called to go forth into the world, to do the things that you've called them to do. Father, we ask that you would use them as your instruments, as your vessels, that those who do not know you, those who do not have the hope in you, those who want to know you, may see your love manifested through their hands as they serve those who are in need. Bless them on their trip going. Bless them as they return. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for your service. Those that they are going to see may not have hope. They may be like the Israelites that Ezekiel saw and heard. It says, we have no hope. They may be like those that don't know who Jesus is. Some of them that were there. It said many believed when they saw Lazarus come forth. It didn't say all believed. It said many believed. And if you go into the next verse, it says that they, some of them went back and told the Pharisees what Jesus was doing so that they could stop him. Many believe, but not all. May your hearts believe and a risen Lord. Your hearts believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your hearts believe in the resurrection. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our going forth hymn today is... All hail